In this video, I'm going to share with you the True Well Common Kickstarter from Digital Taxidermy. Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to give a shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. You make this channel what it is. And in particular, wanted to give a shout out to those that were picked by Bob the Beholder for the GGGG. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this past month of January of 2021, here are those that were chosen. Stephen P received the Core Space Firstborn Kickstarter pledge. Todd C received the ISS Vanguard Kickstarter pledge. Bob P received the Metromorph Cardboard Terrain. Kevin G received the Battle Systems Fantasy Village Cardboard Terrain. Enrique A received the Outlands Battle Systems Terrain. And finally, Vincenzo F received the shanty from Battle Systems as well. If you want to get in on some of the gratitude gifts, make sure to check out my link below for my Patreon page. Digital Taxidermy have launched a number of successful Kickstarters and I did a review for their most recent one before this. If you want to check that out, go ahead and click here. But they are probably the most famous for actually repurposing these 3D filament spools for making terrain. And I think it's really ingenious. Make sure to check out their website and see some of their previous Kickstarters that enables you to use these and to repurpose them for terrain. Again, links in the descriptions below for everything that I'm referring to today. But this time around, they are going sort of the historical route of creating a fantasy village set. And what's unique about this Kickstarter is that it is based on historical pieces. And so they have a hilarious video that I found really fascinating as a history nerd going through some of the traditional houses and buildings that were found in East Anglia, which is where they reside. So make sure to check out that video on the Kickstarter page. Here I printed out some versions of their small house. And I also did print out the alpha version of the church, which I didn't bother printing because I screwed up the print. Also the finalized version that they created is a lot better because it includes the interiors. But the reason why I wanted to show this to you is because you will have to adjust some of the scaling because they don't necessarily match with one another. And the reason why they did that is because they wanted to make larger models like this one printable on your standard FDM printer. So I was able to fit all of these prints on both my Ender 5 as well as my Prusa. And I print all of my terrain at 0.2 millimeter height and that provides plenty of detail for terrain. Also these small huts were the alpha version. I know that they came out with finalized version so it might be a little bit different than the ones that you're gonna be receiving from the Kickstarter. Finally, I do provide a painting tutorial at the end of this video and for the first time, I tried out using contrast colors rather than my traditional method of painting. If you've watched any of my other videos with terrain and my painting scheme, I pretty much follow a standard of base coating with some spray paint and then dry brushing on top. So this is the first time that I'm experimenting and tried out the contrast colors in order to paint these buildings. And I think they turned out pretty well, but you can decide whether or not you wanna go this route or go with the traditional route. Because I will say using contrast colors is a lot more expensive, especially when you use it on buildings because you're using a lot of it. I really do like these small houses because they are modular and they do come in various forms. Uh, you can stack these on top of one another like this. And in fact, this is supposed to be the upper floor, the second floor for the small house unit. And then it comes with a variety of walls as well as these two different styles of roofs. And the other thing in particular that I like about this is that the walls aren't straight and that it is a little bit wavy, which would be more realistic in the sense that it was very difficult to have a perfectly flat surface. 
uh, during that time. So I like the little bit of character that that provides for these houses that make it distinct from some of the other ones. And again, some of the historical background with these houses is fascinating, so I encourage you to watch that video. Let's go ahead and jump over to the computer where I can walk you through the current Kickstarter. All right, so here is the Kickstarter page. Again, links in the descriptions below. And go ahead and watch this video if you like as they introduce the whole thing. Uh, digital taxidermy, the guys over there are super nice. But um, <laughs> I wanna show you this. Um, I've actually, this is the first time that I've seen them uh, show themselves. And I think Neil might be seven feet tall. Uh, so I have no idea, but he just looks super tall. Um, so Neil, uh, if you can mention, or how tall are you? Because in these videos, you look like a giant. But anyway, super fun, uh, super fun to hear from them, the history behind where they grew up and where they uh, still live in East Anglia. And it's obvious that they just have a lot of affection for some of the historical houses that are found there. So definitely worth the watch here. So as you scroll down, here are the uh, different things that you're gonna see on the page. And first of all, um, this is super easy. There's only two pledges. One is this Common Village Center pledge, uh, which right now is $41 US. And then the commercial pledge is 123. Now, most of us are going to be concerned with this. And again, two of these pledges is gonna be going out to a Patreon supporter at the end of this month. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. But they pretty much painted, pretty similar to how I painted mine. And these are basically the buildings that are in the base set, as well as some of the larger buildings that we're gonna see. So if you wanna create a fantasy type village, this is a fun way to be able to do it. And they provide quite a bit of differences. Now this is the church that you saw. Again, I think you need to scale it to be larger if you want it to match the houses. Uh, but you'll have to slice it um, in your software in order to cut it up into smaller pieces if you want to scale it up to be the same scale as the uh, smaller buildings. And this is the kiln. And then the, the one I wanted to really show you is um, here in the churches, they made it so that it's hinged and you can open it up, be able to access the different levels with your miniatures, with that, which I think is a great idea. And they also put furnishings inside of the church building, which again is a great idea as well. So these are all modular. So as you saw me doing, you can stack them, make them multi-story multi if you want with two different style roofs, but a bunch of different styles of uh, walls here at the bottom. And this is what I think is super cool. They have this windmill, which is actually in the video, a historic windmill that is based off of the model that you see there. And so I think this is super cool. If I were to print it out, I would make it larger. Again, uh, they made it this size so that it can fit on most printers uh, and print out as a single piece. But I would go ahead and print it out uh, and scale it up so that it fits the smaller cottages. They do have this historic version as well where you can use a spool for the base. This Kickstarter overall doesn't use a lot of spools but this is uh, one of the models that will use that. Also, you're gonna have walls. So if you wanna have uh, fortifications and walls around your village, uh, this is historically based off of what's in East Anglia as well. So you can check that out as well as this tower. And then this is a video of just showing you the different models that uh, they printed out so you get a sense of what they look like. And again, this is what you're getting in your core pledge. And I'm sure just like in uh, their other Kickstarters, more models are going to unlock. And here's a free file if you wanna download it just to test it to see what it looks like. And then here are the various stretch goals. There's already been three stretch goals that have been unlocked where we have a brewery, uh, some furniture and a bridge. And so I know that they're working on these actual STL files. So I haven't seen them here on the page, but there are a number of other stretch goals that are promised. And so that base pledge is gonna become more and more of a better deal. Here's a furniture pack. And then there's also some social stretch goals 
And then also, if you want to go to their website, you can get some of their previous projects. And this is just one of the many examples they have of using your spools. Because they use the spools as a base, the actual prints are really thin and you can print them out relatively quickly. I was amazed at how little PLA you use when you're using your spools because that's creating all of the strength and structure. So a lot of this is printing out a facade, a thin facade that you're putting on there. So you're actually saving quite a bit of filament in creating these. And so I've been super impressed with all of their designs. And again, they're showing previous Kickstarters. There's a ton of really cool models, especially this sci-fi set I really like a lot. Uh, this reminds me of Necromunda, and so uh, it's very versatile. And this was their last Kickstarter where they created these uh, sci-fi dungeon type um, files. So if you go to their website here at Digital Taxidermy, you're going to find uh, their previous models that are available for purchase. So they've already raised $4,700. They have 128 backers, and it still has a month to go. Uh, I'm filming three days after they launched, so I do think that they're going to be able to raise quite a bit of money and hopefully unlock more stretch goals. So more power to them. So there you go. Hopefully this is helpful for you. If so, please like and subscribe to my channel. And again, check out my link below for becoming a Patreon so that you can get in on the gratitude gifts for each month. So this Kickstarter is included as Neil was kind enough to give two base pledges for True All Commons. So at the end of this month, February of 2021, at least two patrons will be receiving a base pledge for this Kickstarter. Also check out my Patreon page to see what the other GGGGs are for this month. Again, stick around if you want to see the painting tutorial, but otherwise, happy hobbying, happy gaming, and we'll see you next time. All right, so I, all right, so the first difference is I used a different base coat for my primer, and this is Rust-Oleum Camouflage Two Times Ultra Cover, and this is the Camo Sand. And the reason why I like the Camouflage version is that it is ultra matte. So if you can see here, there is no gloss or shine to this at all, which I really like a lot. Now normally, um, I always print in black PLA, and normally I will spray paint this with dark brown and any stone with the dark gray. But because I'm going to be using contrast colors instead this time around and experimenting, I am starting off with this tan color. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and just grab my craft white in order to just do the walls a little bit. Now typically my normal walls are this tannish color but I'm gonna go ahead and try a lighter uh, white uh, over this just to provide a little bit different color variation along these panels. And so all I'm doing is calling this in and I totally do not care and in fact I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the wood as well because that will provide some color variation there too. Now what this does is typically in my old way of painting, the thing that takes the most amount of time is actually painting in these panels. So uh, if you wanna see an example of that, go ahead and check out my most recent video where I did the City of Firwood. And that represents my typical style of painting buildings where I am basically using a regular round brush, sable brush, in order to paint in these panels with this tan color. But we're going to see because since that is the longest step in my normal process, I am hoping that by priming it with this tan and just dry brushing with this white will actually make the whole process a little bit faster but we shall wait and see. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try using Basilicanum Gray for all of the stonework, and I'm gonna experiment down here and see. Now, I'm a little bit skeptical about this looking like a convincing gray, and if it doesn't look good, I'm, I think I'll go back to my old method of putting down zinc, a darker, uh, painting this with a darker gray, 
and then dry brushing it with successive lighter grays. But let's see what this looks like on this stonework right here. I don't know, what do you think? It does look like gray. It is a passable gray. Here, let me grab one of my other buildings. So if we take a look at this gray, clearly it's not gonna be as dark, right, between these two. But do you think that's passable? Let me go ahead and just do it, and um, we'll see how it work looks with the rest of the building. Now let's go ahead and grab one of these roofs and see what it looks like with just a straight tan. And one of the worries that I have with using washes in general and contrast colors is, is it sort of self-defeating to use on 3D prints since you're trying to get rid of the layers and does using washes contrast colors actually emphasize the layers? So that's part of the experiment here too is at the end of the day, should you not be using washes or some of the traditional methods of painting because then you just end up emphasizing the layer lines from the 3D print. But as I, as I apply this here, I don't think I'm seeing the layer lines more then when I do my normal style of printing of painting, or at least it's an acceptable amount. But let's see what it looks like uh, after it dries. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and do all the wood with snake bite leather. And I'm really curious to see how this turns out. I might switch to wildwood if snake bite leather isn't dark enough. All right now I'm grabbing some seraphim sepia to do the roof as this is supposed to be hay. So I'm going to try using the Gorgrunta fur on this alternative roof design and let's see how that turns out. Okay so for this last little bit I'm going to do black on the hinges. Here I just took a filament, stuck this in the burner or a lighter and just pressed this down once it got soft. So I am pretty happy with how this paint job did turn out and so I do think that using Contrast colors is a viable option, but again, I probably won't continue doing that because you are using a lot of paint. So in the long run, I think you're gonna save money by using regular craft paint and using my traditional method of painting these buildings. I have tons of videos, so check them out in terms of how to paint buildings in general if you're interested in that, but for the most part, I do think using contrast colors, especially on this wood, does look really, really good. And I don't know, I do think that you do save some time by, by not having to paint in all of the panels here and going with your uh, base color of tan and then going over it with white was relatively quick. And then doing all of the beams with the contrast colors, I do think is a faster method than my traditional style of painting in all of the panels after coating it with a base dark brown. And you can see here some of the difference between the color because I did color this door with the traditional style where I spray painted it with, with dark brown and then uh, dry coated on top of that 
successive colors of lighter brown. So compare that to the brown here of these beams and you can see a little bit of the differences but overall definitely using the contrast colors gives you a really nice color and especially since I am coloring these panels a lot lighter than I normally do I think that works really well to have the lighter contrast color on the beams and the gray for the stone I'm not I'm not quite as happy with the gray as I am with the traditional style because you do get a darker gray than at least what I used here so I do like the darker gray better but definitely if you look at these chimneys it is a uh, passable overall and I even here you can see a little bit the um, wash effect of really making the lines stand out it isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be so again I think using washes on 3d prints is okay again I am printing at 0.2 millimeter height obviously you're going to get a lot more detail if you go more like 0.1 but for my terrain, I think point two is plenty of detail. But that's obviously up to you. So this was a fun experiment for me to do, checking out contrast colors for buildings.